In April 2017, in the Seward neighborhood of Minneapolis, Minnesota, a direct action took place inside a local progressive cafe. Perpetrators cycle through progressive organizations when survivors are silenced. My silence ends now. After word spread that a store employee had raped someone, management took steps to terminate and silence employees who spoke out, including some who were survivors of rape, while management took no action against the employee who had been accused of having raped someone. Unicorn Riot was present to document the direct action, which took the form of a public teach-in during business hours. We also interviewed three local survivors who participated in this act of community self-defense, and have also since heard from the action's co-organizer about the collective power of groups to confront and interrupt rape culture. As a survivor of sexual assault, living in this society, built upon cis-heteropatriarchy, white supremacy, ableism, and imperialist capitalism, I did not realistically expect easily won justice after being raped. Nevertheless, I do demand to be heard. I was struggling very hard during that time. I had just been attacked and raped randomly as I was walking down the street um, and was working at Birchwood during the time that I was trying to recover from that assault and it was hard and I was struggling and I wasn't able to perform at work and so I informed the, the Birchwood and the management of the Birchwood and they were accommodating and supportive until eventually one of my coworkers, who was the front of house supervisor sent out an email um, informing the upper management that one of the employees of the Birchwood had raped his partner. After simply sharing true facts via email, my friend was fired on the spot and forbade via threatening text messages by the head chef from attempting any further contact with any Birchwood staff. I was immediately told after reading the email not to talk about it. They could have fired him. Their reasons for not were they were scared of being sued. They were scared of the legalities. They said they had responsibility to protect him since he was their employee. But I don't feel like they extended that same responsibility to protect me as an employee, as a survivor of rape when I was telling them that I did not feel safe working with a rapist, a known rapist anymore. I believe that it's a responsibility of businesses to not only um, support and stand by their community members, but also by their employees. And I really feel like um, by silencing their employees and silencing the survivor, it really did that person an injustice, does the community an injustice. They at first said they were going to accommodate me by not having me work with this perpetrator. So they rearranged my schedule and not the perpetrator's schedule so that I was having to rearrange my life around him. I was losing hours, so I was financially being hurt because he raped somebody. A couple days after they made that accommodation, they told me that they had changed their minds and that if I wanted to work at the Birchwood Cafe, I would have to work with the perpetrator and that I had three days to decide if I wanted to keep my job there or not. I learned later that the other Birchwood employee had been harassed out of her job at the cafe. She was subjected to long meetings during which she was harassed and pressured to remain silent about the need to hear voices of survivors of sexual violence. Eventually, I did have to quit the Birchwood, and I didn't want to quit the Birchwood. I enjoyed my job there, I enjoyed the community there, but I felt pushed out, I felt silenced, I was being silenced, and I wanted to work to change what was happening there, but at the time, I was dealing with the fact that I was recovering from a recent assault and the PTSD and dealing with this situation was just too taxing. So I 
I had to leave. They didn't give me another option. Um, I reached out, full of hope to be heard via a neighborhood restorative justice mediator. My expressed motivation for making contact was simply to tell my own story with my own voice, since so much had happened about me without me. Tracy Singleton, the Birchwood owner to whom I reached out via a mediator, replied via email with a refusal to meet with me. What the Birchwood did to me was horrible. It was during the hardest part like the hardest time of my life that I've ever gone through and all they did was make it worse and take away support and take away a job and take away so many things that I was relying on um, and I didn't even know Katzen was on the other end also asking for change and asking to be heard and that they were silencing Katzen as well. Birchwood is a local institution which claims to value social justice and makes highly profitable revenue via its so-called ethical consumerism marketing targeted at upper middle class, liberal Minneapolis residents, and nonprofit employees. I offered to meet with Birchwood ownership in a cozy for them environment of private mediated conversation. They refused. I therefore chose to share my story publicly inside Birchwood Cafe via an interactive workshop about rape culture with the patrons whose money keeps the institution in existence. I saw someone commanding the attention of the room and um, sort of clinking on their glass and getting people to pay attention and they started speaking a little bit about liberal progressive nonprofits not supporting survivors and then Canton started telling their story and saying um, about what happened to them and what happened afterwards. I worked with comrades to organize a direct action at Birchwood Cafe in April 2017 because Birchwood owners repeatedly chose to silence my friends and me when we each sought to share the story of my being sexually assaulted by a Birchwood employee. I contacted Birchwood ownership via an organization that provides third party restorative justice mediation. I was clear that I only wanted to share my story, but ownership refused to speak with me. At the action, I briefly summarized my story as a survivor of sexual assault. Comrades and I encouraged patrons to reflect upon the ways in which we're all interconnected and accountable for each other's well-being within community spaces, including Birchwood Cafe. Perpetrators cycle through progressive organizations when survivors are silenced. My silence ends now. It would have been really nice if this um, business would have stood by their employee um, and I take an action against the perpetrator who happened to be their coworker at the time. The fact of the matter is they had multiple staff members coming to them to talk about this issue, telling them they weren't feeling safe, leaving in tears. And there was like five people that quit during that time. A couple of them were survivors and the Birchwood effectively created an atmosphere that silences survivors and makes survivors feel unsafe. I believe the action had a valuable impact in support of justice for survivors of sexual violence. Several people expressed a desire to learn more about how to raise awareness of ways in which Minneapolis restaurant culture reproduces rape culture. Basically, a huge part of rape culture is the idea that rape is a private issue and it shouldn't be discussed publicly and it's shameful to talk about. The fact that I was raped is not my issue. That is society's issue at large and I'm not going to be silenced about it. I'm going to talk about it and other people are going to have to hear about it because it's not my burden to carry. It's everybody's. And people need to 
stand up and actively support people. If nobody else is standing up for the values and what we need for the community, then we need to. <laughs> um, and, you know, this action was a way to um, tell people about what happened and let them make their own decision about whether they want to support this business. You know people in your life who have been sexually assaulted whether you know it or not. And it's something that affects you for the rest of your life. And actions like this matter because it brings that to people's attention. It lets them know, hey, this is something in your world that exists that you need to acknowledge and you need to confront. Rape isn't a private issue, it's a public issue. It needs to be talked about. People who want to support survivors need to actively support survivors, and that's not easy. But it's also not easy being a survivor of rape. For those who claim to value social justice, act with integrity. No individual can stop every injustice from occurring in this society built upon a foundation of oppression. But all of us collectively can follow the lead of those most impacted by oppressive violence. We have the collective power to end sexual violence if we are committed to center survivor stories to demand reparations of harm, and to interrupt rapists and the reproduction of rape culture.